check it out. I'm in the auditorium. With antibiotic creams, steroid ointments, which promotes colonization of staph and MRSA. When you put a needle through a lesion that has staph or MRSA, you risk carrying that into the body. There are there and the risk of systemic infection. And there are cases in the literature of secondary hospitalization and death from acupuncture through eczema lesions with patients who've used these creams and promoted colonization. So this is also integrative medicine of keeping in mind what patients are using and how that changes their risk, if you see what I mean. When I went to acupuncture school, treatment for eczema was plum blossom cupping, yeah, to, to break up the linden medial. We don't do this anymore because of the risk of penetration of staph and MRSA. So keeping that in mind to avoid needle insertion through any altered skin barrier. So this is what we consider the best evidence in terms of treatment. You can see that a lot of trials have been done to show the efficacy of topical corticosteroids. However, many fewer um, studies have been done on the use of complementary um, therapy. And so this is an area that we hope, um, as a result of today's discussions, may increase with time. The focus um, in the last year or so is actually on the use of biologics. So in, in contrast to using a, um, a global suppression of TH2 mechanisms, treatments like dupilumab, which target the IL-4 receptor alpha, will inhibit the ability for IL-4 and IL-13 signaling to occur. This is a very specific treatment um, that is reputed to allow the skin barrier to heal without, with avoiding the side effects of corticosteroids. But other treatments that um, that allow us to use less corticosteroids are desperately needed in, in the treatment of children with eczema. But when I looked over at my son, I lost it. One of the ladies who worked in the office came over to me and said, breathe, mommy. You're at the best in the world now. I cried tears of relief in that office. When Dr. Ehrlich arrived, he immediately began evaluating him. After going back and forth and getting some test results back from Children's Healthcare of Atlanta, he decided that if we could keep him hydrated, that he believed we could begin treatment with Dr. Lee. He asked us to stay for several hours to be certain he was drinking and he was urinating. The last thing I wanted was to be sent to the hospital for a third time with no results. A few days later, we received the creams and the pills. Luca slept like he had never slept in his entire life. The healing was absolutely incredible to witness. Within days, we were on the subway headed to Times Square. He was building forts with his aunt and his uncle. He was starting to live again. After two weeks, we went back to see Dr. Lee and Dr. Ehrlich. They were extremely pleased with his progress and gave us the go-ahead to return home. The only way I can show you the incredible healing that has taken place over the past 11 months is through these photos. This is a picture when we were at um, Children's Healthcare of Atlanta a few days before we left. This is a picture of him in Dr. Ehrlich's office. We had to carry him everywhere. This is a picture roughly three to four days into treatment. You can see the cream on his face and just a little bit of a smile and he's walking, his eyes are open. This is a picture of my brother and Luke on the subway. This is a picture of us in Times Square. 
keep in mind this is a few days after we began the protocol. This is a picture of Luke and Dr. Ehrlich before we left, uh, roughly two weeks later. This is a picture on his birthday, September 2nd. This is a picture in October. You know, my little guy who loves school, that says honor roll, and that is his character award. And for all of you scientists out there, this was Mad Scientist Day at school where they did science experiments all day. So that's my little mad scientist. And this is him just a few days ago. Thank you everyone for your time and for giving me the opportunity to share the incredible healing that has taken place because of Dr. Lee and what I like to call her dream team. Today, Lucas is incredibly happy and enjoying life. Thank you. Immunosuppressive drugs may be an option, but they are not a patient-friendly approach. Asian and modern TCM textbooks have documented the eczema treatment and the skin healing. And there are also research publications that demonstrated safety and some efficacy. However, there are no well-accepted TCM therapies with high satisfactory results available for steroid-dependent eczema in Western countries. Based on TCM practice and our understanding of pathological uh, mechanisms of toxic dermatitis and food allergy, we developed a unique uh, therapy for recalcitrant eczema associated with food allergy. We summarized the 14 patients' the results that are published uh, by GACI, um, Julia is here, the first author, and uh, showed a promising result to uh, improve eczema, and then this therapy also improved IgE. So for my talk, I will first summarize clinical and observational evidence of a TCM effect on eczema. In the second part, I will summarize the TCM treatment protocol. And then I will highlight some of our updated scientific research is still limited and the plan for clinical studies. To begin with uh, uh, the first part, I will start with this case. This case is uh, very unique because the, it is the first time reflected the collaborations with integrative health care for specific cases. This is a 90 months old male with a chronic and unremitting eczema since three months of age despite regular topical steroids use and other medications. He had a multiple food hypersensitivity allergic to 25 foods tested. Um, he had been on avoidance diet for many foods, including the top eight plus fruits and the vegetables. This is just an example you can see before treatment, just the two to three months, his, most of his IgE uh, went up, particularly milk and the egg um, reached more than 100. He was referred, well, we wrote this doctor, the actor is me, um, from my mentor, Dr. Sampson, uh, for TCM treatment. He received herbal tea, cream, and a bath. I think individually, nowadays a novel, but a combination is an important approach. This is the result. After two months, his eczema conditions improved by 80%. After five to six months of treatment, there were no eczema lesions. Surprisingly, his total, uh, total serum IgE 
decreased from 4,000 to 700, about 700. And the sentient food specific IgE levels were reduced by 40 to 80 percent. This is a child before treatment, three weeks after treatment, and after two month treatment. This is the same one before treatment. You can tell he has a staph infection on his skin. And then after three months of treatment, you can see his skin a little bit blue that come from the print. This is the IgE. You can see um, many of them reduced, including peanut specific IgE. But the egg IgE, after five to six months of treatment, maintained more than 100. So this family decided to continue the treatment. We were able to monitor his uh, IgE levels. You can see after uh, 24 months, many of uh, IgE, specific food IgE reduced. And then he introduced uh, many foods uh, uh, later on. And the most impressive food he introduced is wheat. When he passed the challenge, his dad could not wait to go home, just brought him to the bagel store to have a bagel. <laughs> so mom called me, we were so happy for him. So one of our fellow before Julia, uh, Mia, presented the case in our allergy meeting. Um, Dr. Sampson uh, and, uh, uh, encouraged us to continue this work and to analyze for a case study. So several fellows uh, involved in this work, and uh, Julia and uh, my colleague, uh, Dr. Aaron Fennick, really put it together recently uh, with some data for our publication. This study involved in 14 patients. You can see the age group is from a half year old to a 52 year old. And then the duration of our criteria is that if they finish three months of treatment with, uh, with a moderate to severe eczema, and then most of them are Caucasians, but we also see some Asian uh, people. Here, very importantly, you can see uh, most of these patients are highly uh, atopic. You can see they already have a food allergy, asthma, environmental allergy. They also have a strong family uh, allergy history. Importantly, you can see that some of them have had a very, very high IgE. Just for, the, for our audience who, have, who are not working in the allergy field, normally the IgE level, depending on the age, will be like 50 to 200, or no more than 200, but you can see this individual reach 37,000. We use a tool called the score rat to evaluate the effect. Um, we found that the TCM treatment uh, had remarkable reduction of score rat over average uh, eight months and also uh, had a remarkable improvement on quality of life. And then we also have an opportunity to look at uh, the lab data, and uh, we, found, uh, we didn't find any abnormality on the cells and the liver kidney function. We also look at the IgE, because this group has, most of them have a lot of uh, different uh, positive IgE, with uh, Julia's work, we see we just uh, focus on peanut IgE and uh, then total IgE. We found a moderate uh, reduction of IgE, but a significant reduction IgE levels on peanut-specific uh, peanut IgE. We also look at the total IgE, uh, although some reduced, but uh, um, an individual's IgE, even during the treatment, uh, continue increase, but this individual just had a shorter treatment. We had the opportunity to look at more cases if they completed the two or three years, and then we found a good consistent reduction of total IgE. You can see in this group, we selected the IG, total IgE levels more than 1,000, and some of them about 40,000. 
we do see a good reduction of ITE and a consistent reduction of peanut ITE. So give a quick summary on this slide. TCM improved the clinical symptoms, quality of life, reduced the peanut-specific IgE, no side effects were observed. And the younger, I can show you the data, we also have uh, the, um, we compare the younger and the old children, we found that younger children appear to respond to uh, the therapy quicker than the older children. So after the, this uh, uh, case uh, study, and in the recent years, I have opportunity to see more uh, eczema patients that were, uh, they were referred by my colleagues and also the community, like pediatricians, other allergies, and I also started to collaborate with Dr. Ehrlich, and then he had uh, referred, uh, referred uh, several patients to me, and then the treatment also become mature. Um, then I summarized the several types of eczema I have been seeing at my uh, offset uh, clinic. The first uh, type I call type one is infant, young children with steroid dependent eczema. This group of children, they were using steroids, but uh, but their eczema. Um, was not well controlled, and uh, sometimes they cannot even off uh, one week or a few days. Um, then the second type is uh, old children with uh, steroids dependent eczema. Uh, at this time, they already developed a lot of uh, allergies, particularly food allergies. Uh, one of the most common uh, uh, conditions. Uh, with uh, eczema. Some of them also develop uh, asthma, environmental allergy, uh, EOE, and then because of chronic um, units make the individual very unhappy, some of them develop stress and anxiety. The third type called the red skin syndrome. This, this is a very new type of condition. I did more uh, uh, review and then I think this type of uh, eczema belong to steroid insistent, insensitive, or recalcitrant uh, eczema, steroid withdrawal syndrome, or steroid uh, withdrawal rebound, because this is more severe. It meaning that their eczema works than the baseline before they use a steroid. This condition can happen in adults as well as children. And then the, the type 4 is new, is newborn eczema. Most of the time it's like this. At an early time, I did not get a chance to see this group of eczema. So my colleagues say that they give me the most worst cases. But now I'm lucky I started to see the newborn. Most of the time is they have a first child with the eczema. And then when they have the newborn and then they start to have eczema, they, they are so worried. They don't want these things to happen. Same thing like their first child. So they start to um, contact us and then want me to help this have our eczema. So I also developed the approach. I give external treatment for newborn, you know, two or four months. But if the mother still breastfeeding, I let the mother to drink the herbal tea. And then this group, uh, the treatment effect is quite impressive. Most of the time, a very quick, a couple of weeks, they will be better. And then we, it's still very anecdotal. We have not looked at the long term yet. Well, we followed up with some family. Um, the, the, the baby, if they have not developed a food allergy at the time when they saw me, they are very good. They have not developed a food allergy yet. So I talked to Dr. Ehrlich. We think this might be a future plan. We can start earlier because the treatment is quite a friendly. 
But for today's presentation, I'll just show you um, some of the representative results, um, the PEP1 and then PEP3 at Sigma. So we summarize the 10 patients. So they are young children, young, they are infant or early or young children. It's the most of the time you can see it's a six months uh, to four year old. And then most of the time they are Caucasian and the early, very, have an early onset of eczema. We use, again, the score red as a tool to evaluate the results. At the baseline, you can see the, most of the time, if for the score red above 30 or 35, we consider as a moderate. Uh, and, um, and then above 60 will be um, a severe uh, eczema. You can see most of them have a, moderate to severe eczema. This one is what I just mentioned that. Uh, this, this one just started the eczema and the mom called in, that's why his uh, score is not very high. In most cases, I found that three months of treatment is a big milestone. You can see, uh, it, um, like this case, 70% of the individuals can reach almost a full remission. Mm -hmm. And by six months, basically, they, um, uh, their eczema uh, very well controls. In the clinic, we use a score red. It's a very challenging. You have to look at the area and then in, uh, in the intensity of eczema and ask all these questions. So we tried a new approach. We just ask the parents. We say that, how do you think your kid, you know, uh, have been improved? They said 50%, 30%, 80%. So we made that a record. They, they have a very good idea. Put the kid as the whole situation. So we, we look at that uh, one month. You can see this improvement, uh, three months and six months. And then my colleague Yin me made the correlation. We did see a very good negative correlation, very strong correlation of skin lesion improvement using percentage in the score rate. So this is a very convenient uh, tool. The second thing is very challenging too. We, we have to develop an approach to evaluate how much the patient reduce the steroids. We look at the literature, there's no criteria. So I review the patient cases and develop a tool. Here is the index. If a patient use two times a day, one person has a cortisone, we give index 100. If two times, 2.5 has a cortisone, we give 200. Everything else, moderate or strong uh, uh, topical steroids, we give 300. If they use oral prednisone, we give 400. So we use this tool, and here is an example. You see the patient one, use 2.5 percent hydrocortisone two times a day, so we give 200. After one month, he is able to reduce to one percent hydrocortisone once a day, while skin is still good. The key is, I keep saying that, the skin has to be good. So then, then this one, uh, the patient A, uh, before he started TCM, he had uh, uncontrolled eczema, uncontrolled um, asthma. So his pediatrician come up with approach every every month, uh, put him on eight days prednisone. So even though his skin uh, was not well controlled. <coughs> So this patient responded to a treatment very fast. Um, one month uh, of treatment, his skin got improved, and then he was able. This is not my plan. And normally, I would say, <laughs> too slowly. But you know the family's feeling. Once they feel better, they don't want to continue. So once I know it, he, she already stopped. So I see that if you stop, continue stop. There's no reason to resume. So she, he did not need the steroids. So um, I just uh, put this data together, use this line graph, you can see that there's a very 
nice reduction of steroid uh, uh, use. So this part I want to talk about the red skin syndrome. This is a group of patients. They are not respond to the treatment very well. So for some reason, they stop the steroid very suddenly. So this is a individual, 31 year old female Caucasian. Uh, he ha she had the eczema since she was uh, um, young children. On the off, use topical steroids. It was uh, pretty well controlled. But when she was, but two years ago, her eczema become uh, acting out. So she, she used the uh, uh, topical steroids and uh, worked with dermatologist, dermatologist and uh, keep, uh, increase the potency. But her skin still not well controlled. She decided to stop the steroids all of a sudden. When she came to me, that's uh, two months after steroids withdrawal, you can see the red skin all over. And then um, my uh, assistant son took the photo uh, at the clinic that's on that day. Um, then we started the treatment. She responded very nicely. It's less than one month. So when, in these uh, severe cases, uh, I, I ask the family to uh, contact me, follow up in two weeks. And then this uh, less than two months, you can see there are some good skin start to grow. As I said, these kids can also happen in children. This is the child, um, same thing, start to have eczema. And then uh, with topical steroids, that uh, did not get controlled very well. Um, then the family decided to stop the steroids. Then you can see that his uh, skin. And then we start the treatment one month, three months, and then six months. Needed to reduce the steroid use does not seem to be associated with the potency of steroids used prior to TCF. In the type 3 red skin syndrome, we also see TCM rapidly improves the skin lesion, improves the sleeping loss, and improves mood. Because for this group of patients, Nearly all of them, uh, if adults came to the office, they are very sad, they cry. And then you see after a few treatments, they are more that they come back. So here I will just uh, summarize. So what's this protocol? Um, so we, we use mainly three different uh, uh, treatment approaches. One is uh, herbal creams. There are several herbal creams. One O and one A, most of the time for acute cases and severe cases, they are very difficult to use because the color is very messy. So that's why when the family, when their uh, individual uh, skin improved, I thank the family very much because of the hard work. And then when the skin is better, I started to introduce a cream two and a three. This is a more, a little bit easier for the, uh, to protect the good skin. And then we have a herbal bath. Uh, there are several types. Uh, if, the, if the situation is very severe, sometimes I also suggest to use homemade, uh, freshly boiled. Internal tea, there are three. Uh, the T1, T1A is more uh, for acute and help eating, and the T3 for very chronic uh, conditions, uh, but not acute flare up. There are some combinations if, if the children have uh, GI problems, this is uh, Julia's topic. It's uh, very important that you have to make uh, their digestion and the uh, stomach feel good. If they have a bowel movement dry or loose, you need to help that. And then 
we think her skin condition is a skin, but uh, sometimes they associate with environmental allergy. During the springtime, sometimes their skin get worse. Uh, so this uh, seasonal allergy needs to be taken care of. And then I also have another tea uh, if the patient have asthma, what they are chronically used still. Sometimes, if possible, I always make it available to do acupuncture and the acupressure. But this is not always available because my patients are not always in this area. So now I want to summarize some key points about the TCM remedy to work with topical steroids use. Now we do not know how and why uh, the Chinese herbal remedy seems like it worked well with topical steroids. Um, but there are some hypotheses. Perhaps the Chinese uh, remedy has a synergistic anti-inflammatory inflammatory effect with the steroids. That's why you can see you, if the patient um, on the steroids, you can taper the steroids successfully without a flare. And the perhaps the prevent steroid induce the adverse effect such as an infection. Um, or increase the skin integrity and promote skin regeneration. This will help reduce the steroid skin seeming adverse effect. So this is a couple of information to share regarding the protocol. Most of the time, I do not suggest to stop, well, to stop the steroid too soon. Um, more comfortable period has to be after one month of treatment. Uh, the tapering process is like this. You can do a uh, region by region because, for example, in children, their eczema start getting better like on their chest and the back. So if that area becomes better, you can taper first. But their face, um, ankles, and knees, most of the time, it takes much longer to get better. However, for steroids uh, rebound uh, individuals, uh, there are some options, too, at least. If they reject to the steroids, you have no choice, right? Because the family decided, that, that's it. We don't want to continue. Then you can work with them just to use the TCM as uh, um, a modern therapy, stand alone, but then um, the treatment uh, of uh, potency need to be enough. And then if uh, the family or patient agree to resume uh, steroids, you do not need to go to a very high potency. You can start with a low potency, like 1% to 25%, together with the TCM, seems like work nicely. Here, that's what uh, in uh, our uh, previous uh, fellow, summarized uh, most of the herbs and then did a literature search to try to understand what these herbs uh, do um, related to eczema. I just pick up one uh, herbal constituent here just to show you an example. example. This is the TCM clinical use record uh, for this herb. This should uh, help eczema burns and then some uh, antivirus effect. You can see um, has a very good, uh, broad antibacterial effect, including staph and uh, antivirus. There are some clinical studies. They study burns um, with a very large uh, patient population and then they see a good improvement. So that's what I think some of these herbs may help the skin to regenerate. Uh, and then in addition to directly inhibit uh, the infection. Here I want to highlight just uh, two slides about our research. Our research for eczema is still far behind. Uh, but here we uh, show some interesting results. We know uh, we talk about uh, eczema is a TH2 dominant uh, allergic reactions. We want to test uh, if this uh, herbal tea has the inhibitory effect on TH2. So we did a study this from our um, previous uh, fellow's uh, work. 
uh, we these the cells a memory TH2 cell. They produce a lot of IL-4, which is critical for promoting IgE production. So we found that with the stimulation, you see, without the allergen, you do not have any detectable IL-4. But if you give allergen to these cells, they produce five, more than 5,000 picogram of IL-4. But then, if you give a treatment, 500 microgram, you can basically shut down L4 production. But then, if you dilute it out, this effect will be uh, reduced. That's why in the clinic, uh, most of the time, I want to emphasize to use enough doses. Most interestingly, you can see, regardless of any dose, even the dose as high as 500, that can shut down L4, you do not see any cytotoxicity. Therefore, this, uh, this treatment at a cellular level, we demonstrate the safety. Recently, I collaborated with our immunology colleagues, Dr. Adrian Tien. His lab developed a very unique model. These mice spontaneously have a skin lesion, have a very, very high IgE and a systemic inflammation. So we uh, start to collaborate. You can see these mice, the lesion um, involved whole system. And then actually they also have an internal inflammation. This is a gene knockout of mice. So we start test uh, if the herbal cream or herbal tea can help improve the lesion. We did see a very fast improvement. This is day one, day four, and the day so this model will help us to test the uh, new treatment. Now I would like to just summarize our plan. Uh, we have ongoing research to refine herbal product because currently the <laughs> this is uh, all the topic and uh, we just uh, improve this therapy step by step. This uh, we, we worked on food allergy, now we need to work on this asthma. So, um, we 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 get a support from our family. We started to refine the herbal product. Our goal perhaps uh, will be like a two or four uh, capsules uh, per day. That's our goal. We also identify active compounds. We study the matrix. Clinical study. We studied uh, my colleague. Um, Aaron and uh, we, we start to discuss and also discuss with Dr. Samson. We want to start a, a, a practice based evidence study, uh, also called the proof of concept study, no placebo controls. We just want to see the reality, a possibility using a perspective, not just a case study, to determine <coughs> what works the best for specific types of eczema. So our guest from Guangzhou and Henan perhaps have a very good idea that Chinese medicine may not be one treatment for all conditions. So we think we may have an opportunity to determine which one works better for specific. And then we, the outcomes, uh, we'll use the classical tool, uh, we add the, our index, the steroid use index, that's our goal. We want to help our patients to reduce steroids or take off steroids without layer. We also look at skin integrity. Julia has a tool, we can look at that. We want to have a look at the gut and the skin microflora. We already set up a collaboration with another Chinese uh, uh, institute because this type of study it's very exceedingly expensive. Then we we'll look at the immunological changes and then uh, safety. Our goal for this study, this is a milestone we want to reach. Uh, we want to reach 8 to 100% reduction of spore rate and then a uh, single uh, percent for steroids use. Now I would like to, to end my presentation to thank my colleagues uh, Judy, Aaron, uh, Mir, and a uh, lot of my colleagues here, and uh, Dr. Samson for their uh, uh, incredible work. And, um, 
and uh, support. Uh, and uh, Henry Ehrlich and uh, Susan Westman for their insights, and uh, Sam Parker, uh, Philip, my clinical assistant, for their work in uh, this uh, um, clinic for supporting us. And the members of uh, Chinese herbs of uh, allergy patient uh, group, I want to give them uh, great thanks because this group of uh, parents, mothers, uh, they support each other and then they have done great work. Uh, I also want to thank the founders for this study and uh, all members in uh, the society uh, um, and the families for the support. Thank you very much.